That looks like Kia McLean and uh, Marcus Goodwin getting ready to join us uh, from Data Firm to Real. Those of you that uh, know us know that Kia McLean is our sister. She is the amazing Kia McLean, the poet. If you're not following her, follow her on Instagram. She has uh, uh, Cigar Chronicles and Cigar Chronicles 2. Cigar Chronicles 2 being my favorite of the two. I don't want to have to say why. That's because you're in it. That's because you're in it. I'm going to put it out there. That's because you're in it. Because Chevalier is in it. And so uh, (laughs) I love that one, but I love them all. And uh, hey, welcome to the show, Marcus and Kia. So let me just say this. Welcome to the show, Marcus and Kia. We're glad to have you here. (laughs) <laughs> it's been 36 hours since we seen y'all, because y'all were over here, too. It's because you kicked us out. I didn't kick us out. You had to be released. Y'all of all, you, you two of all know that y'all can stay here as long as you want. <laughs> they, they came to Casa de Chevalier to kick it on Saturday night, and we had a great time, and uh you know, we talked about releasing. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it, Ray? Was she look at the camera? I knew y'all was going to do it. For three quarters of a mile. <laughs> three quarters of a mile on the tollway. She looked at the camera. Talking about releasing. Just couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. Hey, <laughs> check it out. Y'all boy, look where he at. Right here next to me. Any other time he'd be trying to get away from me. He'd been nudging me under the arm for the last 10 minutes. He, 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 ain't, he ain't care about you all weekend. I know, because you were sitting in this chair, Ray. He thinks he's he think he dealing with me. But I'm like, hey, you know what I'm about to do in a minute? I'll be like. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, Joy, somebody on the other side of the screen. Look at my Keisha say, hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Top of my Keisha Watson said, what's up? <laughs> Man, he nudging me under the arm and say, well, he was nudging you Sunday. I mean. Had my arm way up here and throw that yeah. Frisbee. <laughs> so, Alicia, so let's go, go ahead. Go so ahead, Data man. Firm The Real, tell us about that. So Data Firm The Real is a group Key and I started about a year ago. And it all blossomed from her and I having a general conversation about life and love and things of that nature. And one day, as we was talking about things, we was talking about some of the things that her girlfriends go through, some of the single girls, some of the ladies. And I would talk about some of the guys go through in a single life and relationships. And we will bounce thoughts of each other. Because people want, because somehow people always want to come to other people with play advice or even just a listening ear. And so one day we were like, we can start, let's start a group. And we want to open that dialogue. And that's what it is. It's an open dialogue. We're not counselors. We're not, that's not what we do. What we do is facilitate conversation. You know, we're trying to, um, per se, like, get rid of the myths and the stigmas of the bad relationships, the, uh, the bad things about being single. We want to get rid of the unhealthy thoughts and the toxic traits that we often have, which lead to bad relationships, or even being seeking bad people to, be, to cope with or counteract our healing when we try to do better. You know... Kia and I have had several relationships in our, in our life. And obviously they didn't work out because we're here together. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's a fact. That's, yeah. that's a fact. Yeah. But what, what we had to do is one of the things we came about was uh, we can't blame the other, like our exes, for our break for the breakup. You know, we have, for every breakup, you also played a part in it. I can't, I can't name one person in the world and who did everything perfect in a relationship. If you, if you, if you did, you're a bad man. Come on, let me interview you because I want to find out how. Right. Yeah. What's, <laughs> what's, what's your, what, I need, what's to, your I need to know. Success. Yeah, I need to know too. <laughs> show roadmap you know, is upset. 
And so what we're doing is, you know, we want the singles who are on their journey of healing and when to meet like-minded singles who can compliment them, compliment each other. That's what that's what's making it best. So like Kia and I, we compliment each other. And anybody tell you we are total opposites. But we compliment each other. Right. And through our, and through our journeys, we have learned to accept other, each other and do better for each other. And that will help us and learn to communicate. Now we're not perfect at it. But every day we try to move farther in the journey, and, mm -hmm. and being transparent helps others to see, hey, we can do the same thing, or I can. But being transparent, I can look at others, or we can look at others and say, hey, that's right. Let me just kind of see how they're doing it. Because now this, we hear about this divorce or this uh, problem, uh, and heaven forbid the, the domestic violence, which is so which is, I don't want to get into that, but we need, we need to focus, also focus on the positives. The people who have married 40, 50 years, or the singles who are dating healthy people, you know, mingling with suitable people, men and women, and, and doing it. Yeah. You know, people are happy being single, living good life in their own skin. Right, right. right. So, so just, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead, finish up. No. Talk, no. It's about y'all. Say what you. It's about y'all. So let me just say this. This is about y'all. <laughs> no, you was me, baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the name Data Firm the Real. Where where did that come from? <laughs> so this, this stuff, how this went is is it's not crazy. It's just real simple. Key and I. And her nephew, we were driving Target. And, and we had came up with the idea of the platform, and it was like, we need a name. So by the time we were driving to Target, we were shopping at Target, getting broke at Target, <laughs> and going back home. <laughs> and we, as, as she cooking, you know, so when she cooking, you know, while I'm salivating, we just start getting <laughs> ideas that start coming out. <laughs> Marcus, dude, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm salivating. Oh, yeah. I'm salivating. Hey, I, I, I know I'm pretty. I'm, I'm handsome man, big. I, I, I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we just came up, you know, people be talking about could you singles and dating, people relationship dating, dating yourself, dating others, your affirmations. And in that ball, and and most of all, just keeping it real. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. So you guys have been dating a year, I think just over a year, right? Yeah, and about so, a year and three four months. Yeah, I I, I I I like to say that I remember when that all started because we were all, you know, I was new to the cigar game, and and Kia is one of my best friends, guys. And uh, it, it, we have a lot of conversations. One of the things that I admired about you guys starting out was the level of communication from the gate and just thinking about that. And so when you talk to couples, how do you help them to, like, achieve that level of communication? How do you get them to working towards achieving the level of communication? Because you guys were a bit of an anomaly to me in the way that yeah. – you guys were kind of like, I just call y'all freaking frack. You know, you guys are made to be together. You know, I think Marcus saw that shit. Marcus saw that shit years ago and said, you know, Kia's gonna be my woman and everything. But I digress. How do y'all? Uh, how did? How did? What do you guys do and say to help couples to work towards achieving that level of communication? Yeah. Um. So one of the things that. I think both of us did differently entering into this relationship was intentionality, right? So we we came into this relationship with intention and we really learned from our previous relationships. And so we knew that communication was going to be a big thing. And so we started off just talking. We started off asking questions. We started off, you know, sharing things. 
so that you know each person really understood so when people come to us and say hey you know how are you all able to do this because i actually had a lot of um i'm not going to say a lot but i had a few people that were like you know you guys are moving fast it's but i i what one thing i can say is when you get to a certain space in your life you realize that all the mistakes that you made were because you probably did move too fast and you didn't have communication as part of that. But when you have communication, when you have two people who are um, intentional, when you have two people who are on the same page, one of the things previously was I was aligning with people who weren't in the same space with me. They didn't want what I wanted. And when I communicated that, they communicated that back to me but I chose to hear what I wanted to hear. But right. when we spoke, it was, hey, this is what I desire. This is what I want. He's, he's not only saying that, but his actions are saying the same thing. So when I talk to other couples, I'm like, you can't just listen to a person's words. You have to also watch their actions. If those, yeah. things, if those two things don't line up, then they're not on the same page with you. So it really is about, you know, I hate to say it this way, but it's like being smart enough, because in the past, I, I wasn't smart enough to pay attention to the alignment of those two. Communication is key, but your actions have to line up with what's coming out of your mouth. So what was coming out of his mouth was lining up with his actions. So when I would talk to other girlfriends, I'm like, well, yeah, he's telling you he crazy about you and he want to be with you, but his actions aren't saying that. He's a no-show. He canceling. You can't reach him. So that might not be the healthiest relationship for you or the route that you're trying to go. You're saying you want to settle down and get married. So you need to evaluate whether or not that's something you really want to do. So, yeah, communication is key, but also ensuring that the person that you're with, their actions are lining up with exactly what they're saying. Because that tells you everything. So yeah. was that that was basically your way of, of building trust, so to speak. Exactly. Building that trust. Cause I, I think, you know, and I'm trying to play devil's advocate for those that watch this that are entering into a new relationship. But I hear a lot of single ladies that I work with say, you know, it's hard for them to trust kind of going in. You know, do you kind of approach it that okay, in order to build that trust, you gotta take a risk in a sense and put yourself out there? Absolutely. And I think um, one of, and Marcus alluded to this a little bit earlier, and I want to kind of go into that a little bit more deeply, is you, you have to know that if you're going into a relationship, it's a risk. You don't know what the other person is going to do, right? You can only go by at that moment what they're saying and what they're showing you. So right. over time, yes, trust is... <clears throat> they freeze up. Yeah, they froze up. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be back we, in a minute. Are we in? There you go. Okay, yeah, you're back. Okay. you back. Okay. Yeah, you were saying over time. Yeah, so oh. over time, you have to pay attention to those things. But what happens is people will continue in those relationships where there's not that alignment, and then that builds up a negative attitude about relationships. And so we mm. don't take accountability for staying in relationships that are not lining up the way that we wanted to. So instead, we blame the man. And I can only speak from a woman's perspective. A lot of times the women will say, well, men ain't shit. And then they don't really want to do this. And they don't want to do that. But he showed you that. And you right. went another three months. You went another six months. You went another year in hopes that you cooking or you doing this, or you doing that, would change him. He's who he is. So now what you have is a negative attitude about all men. Yeah. And so the trust is not going to be built with the man that does come along. So the nice guy that comes along, who could be aligning with you, you won't give him the opportunity because you have chosen to have a negative attitude based on your bad decisions. And this is why I say nice guys finish last. This and... This is coming from my own experiences when that negative attitude is stuck. When the, when the nice guy, good guy come in who's right for you, 
you so now you're paying the same words, but you're broken. You gave this other the guy that wasn't good for you the best parts of you. Now when the good guy come along, guess what? You don't want to give him the the, the great opportunity because to give him to reciprocate the the love and the the things that you require that you should need as a person wanting to be in a relationship. Yeah. So now right. we get now you have to go on that new journey of un unbreaking yourself. Like to embrace it, unbreak my heart in some way. I don't know. But you gotta <laughs> hey, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, and that's and that's one of the qualities of my qualities of babe. She has always talked about healing, not just in relationship, anything to do with self healing. If you don't heal and move forward in that direction, you can't achieve a better relationship or manifest that perfect partner that you right. need. Or that you require, or that you want, that you so desire, and that's what the and that's the open communication come in. Let's get it out in the open. What do we need to do? No, what step? What step did you take? What step did you take? Where did you trip? This is how I trip. This is how I got up. Right, right. Don't don't crawl. Stand up and walk. So we got a question. We got a question in the comments. Cotton candy lovers, cigar lovers. Question, what does it mean when a man or female say they don't like talking on the phone, but they will text all day, but they can talk on the phone with friends? Run, run, as fast as you can. <laughs> they married. <laughs> they, they married or got somebody at the house? There's somebody next to them? Yeah. You know, if, right they, next to if they them. talk up. Now, here, here's my rebuttal to that question. Are they coming home to you? Because uh, if if he's at work and he's coming home, he can talk to you when he get home, right? And then you know that that, that can be some conversation. Difference. Because also, uh, you know, if he if y'all talk all day long and he get home and y'all now y'all ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, because y'all talk all day. But 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 on the flip side, he is you know the whole of the question. He is texting. All day long. So he might be married. Yeah. <laughs> it's a strong possibility. It's a strong possibility that, that somebody else got his last name. Somebody else got his last name. He might not wear the ring. He might not okay, wear the ring because like, he's construction. On a serious note, uh, on a serious note, I will say this. This is one of those moments where if this is what would happen. Somebody would call me with a question like that. One of my girlfriends would call me with a question like that, right? Marcus would be sitting there. He would hear me on the phone. And he would say, everybody calls you for, you know, for insight or advice or thoughts or whatever. Because one of the things that I do, which doesn't work for everybody, is I keep it real. It's going to be 100. You might not like how it slides down, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You might right. not like it, so I'm not for everybody, but I'm going to be honest with you. Don't set yourself up with things and with people that you know, if it feels off, it's off. Your intuition is your protection, and oftentimes we ignore the thing that's there to protect us. So right. If you want to believe that a man who is unavailable to you, because just texting is unavailable. If he's in a different state, he needs to be able to talk to you. Because she said he's in a different state. Yeah, if yeah. He's not available right, right. to talk to you on the phone so you all can get to know each other more. Run, run as fast as you can. I know I laughed about it earlier and I sang about it like it's a joke, but I'm dead serious. Because that is your that is a telling thing right there. But that's the thing that we'll ignore, right? And we'll continue with this. And we'll end up a year later, right? And then that thing that's been in the dark will be exposed. And guess who we're mad at? That person. Instead of being accountable and saying, yeah, I felt it all along. I knew something was off. I knew this wasn't right. So instead of being accountable, instead of us learning, instead of us growing, we get mad at the other person, which 
doesn't allow us to heal, doesn't allow us to grow, doesn't allow us to learn from that mistake. So then you get into another relationship, you still angry, you got trust issues, you, you're dealing with the same things, and now that next person is gonna have to deal with your shit. And then you, you just keep carrying that over. So you need to take the time to stop, heal, figure out what decisions you're making that attribute to you being in bad relationships. Because it's not always the other person's fault. You have to start looking at yourself. Why am I making these types of decisions? How do I keep ending up with a different version of the same person? You know what I'm saying, babe? But if you actually go back to what you said earlier, <clears throat> communication. If he if he's texting you and talking to every uh, his homeboys or whatever, did you say, hey, I'm not I'm not big on you just texting me, not talking to me? Because if that's something I'm used to doing, they say playing down with that. If that's something I'm used to doing, I'm gonna keep doing it till you say something. And I think if I'm truly into you. I'm gonna do something to course correct that. Cause for who you you wanna change for who you wanna change for. Exactly. If I wanna be with you, I'm gonna do different things to make sure that we work out. Cause I can't do everything I used to do, cause one you knows two is not just one. So we can tell our business right here a little bit, right? Go ahead and tell it. Okay, so what part? <laughs> oh, said, oh, wait, what part? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. You better you better check, Marcus. Disclaimer, real quick. You better check, Marcus. Go ahead. So, Marcus travels mostly every week for work, right? And that's how it's been since we've been together. He's usually traveling Monday through Friday, right? So, he's not a phone person, though. He is not a phone person. I knew this about him when I met him. He told me that. We communicated about that. But then I told him, I said, well, you're gone during the week, so we have to have some... I'm not a phone person either, really. So we what? have some dialogue, right? What, what did she so, say? What did she say, Ray? She's not a what? Not she, not a, a, she said she's not a phone person. Not, you're not, but I talk oh. to some people on the phone, but I'm not really a phone person like that. Yeah, some people when, 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 let me let me clarify. Yeah, when we say when we talk that. about phone people, we're talking about people who can sit on the phone, the conversation be done, and y'all still just sitting there talking oh, to other people right. while oh, still right. on the phone. Okay, okay. okay. Exactly. You know, exactly. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. get off the phone. Yeah. 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 Tools at work. <laughs> but, but Ray should still be talking 100 miles an hour to me for at least an hour. I ain't never had a conversation with Kia that, la that did not last at least an hour unless she was not at the plantation and not on the couch. That's all I'm going to say. Back to Because <laughs> anytime if she is on the couch, that is going to be in a two and a half hour conversation. So that's why even though I'm shooting these boats at work, she still be talking a thousand miles a minute. I can't but even see, get a boat. But see, like I said, that's not a phone person. The phone, phone person okay, is when you are on the phone, y'all ain't got nothing to say, but you and you talking to everybody else. Yeah. And ain't got nothing going on on the phone. You just talking to or or the people that call you and say, What you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> nothing chilling. And then and then this. Nothing chilling. Right. Yeah, me How too. About the people that you say, all right, then I'm gonna let you later, and they start up 17 more conversations with you. I'm gonna go and let you go. Hey, I'm while I got you. you, while I got you, <laughs> <laughs> hey, while I got you, or the while people I that you. say I ain't gonna hold up too much of your time and keep talking for another 30, 40 minutes. Uh -huh, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> they say stuff like hell is hot. <laughs> <laughs> they just throw it. Hell is hot out there. And then but but no, in all honesty, 
know, a <laughs> phone person. So I said, okay, here's our compromise. We'll have a conversation, um, you know, maybe once, twice a week. We don't have to talk long. We just kind of tell, tell each other about our days. We say hello in the morning. We say good night. And we have texts in between the day. However, because of the trust that's built up, I don't need to FaceTime my man. I don't need to see him laying in the bed by himself. I don't have trust issues in this relationship. Why? Because the communication, because of his actions. If, if the things that we talk about, his actions line up with it, there's no need for me not to trust the person that I'm with. And so we have a healthy relationship. This is actually the healthiest relationship that I've ever been in. I don't have to doubt or guess or assume anything with him. I know that I can trust him. Now, is, is he a person that can ultimately do whatever he decides to do? Absolutely. But my trust is there. He hasn't done anything to break that trust. And I think that is what it's about. It's about being with somebody that you don't have to always be worried. If you're always concerned about what your partner is doing, if you feel like you got to sneak and do this and do that and check check phones, do this, then you're not in the healthiest relationships. So you might have to reevaluate that. So when you guys talked about how did we come up with data from the bill? Like we literally were like brainstorming. Okay, what is this group going to encompass? What are mm -hmm. we going to be talking about? We don't want to, there's a lot of groups that ultimately just talk about married people. They just talk about single people. But we're talking about single people and we're talking about dating people and we're talking about married people. Because ultimately, what's the goal? To be in a healthy relationship and think and see positive relationships around you, especially with black couples. We black oftentimes boy. want to go straight to negativity. We want to talk negatively about black relationships and black love, but it exists. It's real. I surround right. myself with people like that. We right. on Saturday night, what were we? Three black loving couples around each other and we laughed the entire night. We the whole night. Alcohol. Yes, we did. Yes, so, we did. So it exists. It's real. We don't have to document every moment that we're enjoying our love on social media, but it exists. So we wanted to create a platform where other people Singles could see loving relationships do exist. People in relationships. Oh, these people have been married 40 years. We can have that. The people who have been married, they can see those who are dating and those who are single, and they can even learn from, from those people. So we're all coming together and just sharing and loving on one another. And that's what it's about. So, real quick, so I want to give you a phrase, babe, about bringing out certain attributes to me, and this is what a good mate or person or by your side will do, be able to highlight or integrate certain aspects of me. As I know you'll know, I am not a social media person. If you ever go on my Facebook, Instagram, you won't see any pictures. But she said, this is what we got to do, and I see this in you. And, and this is the most I've ever been on any kind of social media platform. Now I'm Every week doing this, doing that, being out there, taking. I hate, I just like pictures. I'm too. What's wrong too, with too, pictures, man? I'm too, too yeah, cause digitized. <laughs> you, you, oh. <laughs> you say digitized. To be digitized. <laughs> Y'all know this. Y'all know this. <laughs> I'm not, saying, oh, man. I'm not saying a word. I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> so, <Good> but, thing <laughs> but people, I know being, being with her is something that she does, and I, and I accept that, and I learn to do it, and it works, it works for us, and it is, it's, bringing to a, it's bringing us to a better place, and it's, help, and it's helping this platform grow. So this is something I had to adjust. Like you say, if you want to be with somebody, you make adjustments. You course correct. And that's one of the things I did. And now it's, 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 it's part of the course because this, this is who I want to be with. This is what we do. This is the brand that we're building. But he says, hey, Mark, you can do this. This is what you can do. You can ignite this. You can work this. We can make a better place. 
and this and that's what I said. So I was, I just want to give her flowers out in front of everybody because I can't. Oh, he gonna get them flowers, Ray. Oh, thank you. Give him <laughs> some, some sugar. Some sugar. <laughs> some sugar. <laughs> so let me ask you guys something. You know, so what have been some of the challenges since you and you know I've I've been following Data Firm the Real since its inception. But what have been some of the challenges you faced? You know, with moving your your platform forward. Support. You know, and I think that happens with any platform, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of go backwards, we've done a number of things. And I think we've done some amazing things in the group yes. to try to yes. move forward. Um, when we started in the group, we started with the Love Dare Challenge, which, how long was that? 90 days. 90 days. So we did a 90-day Love Dare Challenge when we first started the group just to kind of ignite some interest, right? And the Love Dare Challenge was about checking in with your partner, creating questions to, to check in with your partner. So you would ask your questions, a set of, uh, ask your partner a set of questions, and then you guys would follow up every two weeks up until those 90 days. What we saw happen was pretty amazing. We saw people like, man, I learned so much about my partner. I learned some things that I probably could do. I could add this to the relationship. We could do that. In those 90 days, we saw people's relationships flourish. We saw things change positively in people's relationships, even with us. Like, we, we got to learn more and more about each other and understand more about each other. And so by creating that Love Dare Challenge, it involved people. People were checking in. People were like, hey, this is what we're doing. And they didn't have to share their questions. If people wanted to, they could. Um, another thing that we did was we hosted several live events. Mm. Our very first remember. event we held at a student gentleman to right. our the Farmers Branch, Texas. And we had a uh, panel of men from all walks of life. So we had a single guy. We had somebody that had been married for a long time. We had somebody that was just dating. And so you got to hear from these different men and their perspectives. The women asked their questions in the audience. It was amazing. It was, was awesome. it, it was such an amazing experience. You, you were at that event. Yes, um, yes. Well. And then we had uh, another event where we had all women panel. Right. And so the men could ask their questions, and the women gave their insight on things. And then we did another event, which was our most recent event, where my cousin, who I believe is still on here, yep. she's in California. She's a licensed therapist. She flew in from California. We had a weekend event. It was an all male um, uh, yes. round table event yes. where the men could talk about their things because we wanted to start to talk about mental health. And then on that yeah. Sunday, it was open for anybody that wanted to come out. And we really wanted to focus on how to identify mental health in your partner, how to help your partner through those mental health challenges. Because again, the other side of me is always talking about healing, right? So it made sense for me to come for us to come together and do this as it relates to relationships. And so, you know, that's what we did. And so people have found value in this. And so the biggest challenge is we have this small group of people only getting the value. But there are so many more people that we know could get value from all the things that we're doing, which segues into us having this annual anniversary event that starts next Friday. It's going to be a full weekend of events. And on Friday, it's going to be a happy hour. It's open to everybody. It's not just for the people that are in the group. Anybody that wants to come out, you're in the Dallas area, you can come out on Friday night. We're going to be starting at Wizard Sports Lounge. Mm -hmm. That's in Richardson, Texas. We're going to be there from about 5 to 8. On Saturday, we're having a masquerade ball. Get your best dress. Uh -oh. Mask. We're going to be doing that from 5 to 8 on Saturday. That's going to be at Cleopatra Hookah Lounge in Carrollton. And then on Sunday, we're finishing off with a trail walk in the park and a picnic. And then we have one surprise on Sunday that we're not going to tell you guys about. You have to come to, to see what that's mm -hmm. about. And so it's going to be a fun, interactive weekend. But the thing is, our goal is to interact with other healthy, loving, positive people. 
and let other people see that there is healthy, positive relationships out here. Have a healthy, loving, positive relationship with yourself. Have healthy, loving, positive relationships with others. And then you can learn. We can all learn and glean from one another by doing that. So if anybody wants more information, you know, feel free to inbox us, send us a DM. Um, I saw somebody had a, a, a question about is it a Facebook group? It is. The Facebook group is they affirm the real on Facebook. Make your request to be in. We, and we have people from everywhere. There's people from my home city in the group. They're not in Dallas. Um, my sister just booked the flight today. She's coming to attend the festivities. Um, so a, a lot of people are, we got people in Houston that may be showing up. So it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun time. So if you can't make it this time, then come out to the next time. Because we, we do events like every two or three months. And I'm definitely, definitely going to be, I'm definitely going to try and make it. Well, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to make it this weekend, but I'm definitely going to make it to the next one. Yeah, this, uh, the, the events, man, are nice. Like I said, the, the first panel that uh, they did, I attended. And the the conversation that that came about from these guys, man, to sit down and watch three different men that were of three different age ranges, too. One mm -hmm. of the gentlemen had been married for 34 years, I believe. And yep. uh, he's a very conservative guy with a military background. And so as he oh, talks, you like that. Uh, <laughs> you know it, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. Y'all know I'm, I'm kind of conservative from a military background, but not as conservative as he was. But the, uh, the, the ladies, the idea of the ladies just being able to fire off questions. You had one single guy that was dating. And this guy was a really, um, I would say, a really self-aware individual. You know, he knew what he wanted. He, you know, he was a creative, and you could tell that. He knew exactly what he wanted, how he wanted. He's a great yeah. communicator. And then you had another guy that was single that was all the way to the, just the opposite. That mm -hmm. yeah. was, was not sure of what he wanted. He's. He was the nice looking guy built and, you know, the ladies walk up to him and they see him, but, you know, not to disparage him, but there wasn't much substance to him, but he had conversation. You know, mm -hmm. He had conversation. You know, he, he was going to win in the beginning, but after you unwrap the package at home, yeah. He was gonna be like, God damn, hi, come on. And we yeah. and we did that on purpose. We yeah, and it, 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 you could tell that was very purposeful. The people it that was. We should be on the panel. It was very because we wanted to expose all of those different things in men, and we wanted women to see that so that they could see like and, and ironically, there were women in the room that gravitated more towards the person you just spoke of. Right, yeah, there mm. was. Right. But the, the interesting thing about that night was, I think I was one of the only men in the in the audience. I know Marcus was there. I mean, Jeff. It was, it was about a couple more. It was, it was Rodney, a couple more. It was a few uh, more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rodney. But uh, one of the things that was really interesting to me was the level of conversation amongst the women as as they were asking the questions of the men on the panel. And how, mm -hmm. as they talked, everybody had an opinion. They started to see these things mm -hmm. in the men in the panel. You, they, yeah. they started identifying these traits because each one picked up on something different, you know. And it was really a great event, man. I learned a lot just being a married man sitting in there, you know, and, and listening to the conversation. It was a lot to be learned. And I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted – you guys to come on tonight because I feel like a lot of people are not aware or they're not being exposed to forums like yours, to platforms like yours that can right, help. Right. You know, and we need this across the board in all cultures, but in our culture, the black culture, we we need this. We we need these types of things that kind of open our eyes and give us a glimpse, it you know, an in depth glimpse. It's not so surface. And the way you guys approach things, no matter how practical it is, you do it with such purpose, you know, and intention that you usually, you know, bring about 
what people need. You know, you, you kind of put them in a situation that they're able to talk it out and get what they need without you telling them what they need. You know, yeah. a, and the great thing about being at a live event, some things that don't come across on camera that you that the vibe and entry that, that you just can't go through the airway, even seeing them in the background watching different body language. You you notice that when you when you talk about the ladies in the audience, yeah, and certain co topics of conversation came up, how the body language just shift. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I saw a lot of women sitting <laughs> on the edge of the seat. I mean, it was one sitting to the left of me. I thought she's gonna take her shoe off. I was like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm down. I, 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 I looked over and I whispered to her. I was like, I got my pistol just in case you start tripping. <laughs> I was I was I was just about gonna, to say that uh, your I wife know, said it can't be digitized. I was just about to say it can't be digitized. <laughs> Can I be digitized? Can I be digitized? <laughs> well, yeah, we have to touch on the that, that we go live in the group every single Wednesday at seven PM Central Standard Time. We go live for one hour. So from seven to eight, there's different topics that we touch on. And the last two weeks, we talked about cheating. So two weeks ago, um, we we talked up to the men. Yep. Mm -hmm. Marcus had a guest on, and they talked about men cheating. Not why men cheat, but we did want to delve into that, especially after the whole Neil Long thing. Everybody was talking about it. And so the men kind of gave their insight. They, they told about their history of cheating, why they cheated. That was a great dialogue last Wednesday. Um, Felicia and I, Yule's wife, we actually talked about cheating in our past and what led us to cheating and, and just different things like that. And it was such a deep, honest, transparent conversation. The thing that I think most people take away, when people call me or they message me afterwards, they say, typically, we appreciate the vulnerability. We appreciate the transparency because you are exposing things and talking about things that people are holding in, people aren't talking about, and it's helping us. It's helping us to be honest with ourselves. It's helping us to be honest with our partner or, you know, whatever, but it's helping. But we just need more people to be aware of what we're doing. And if you're open to being a part of it, come on over, join us. You know, we just created the Instagram page because we're, we've been really just trying to build momentum in the group and on our YouTube page, um, which we didn't mention, but we also have a YouTube page. So, of course, go out and follow those those outlets. We're sharing some some personal things. We're sharing some nuggets from other people. So we, we need the support so that we can um, keep the momentum going. Right. You know, sometimes the support goes this way and it goes that way. And I actually heard you, Ray, you said this one time ago. Some of the nature is like... If I have, you only have one person supporting you or listening to you, you keep doing what you're doing. It's going yeah. to grow. Don't be discouraged. But you know what you're doing is right and is meaningful. Just keep pushing. And right now, I, I'm we looking at this year. It's almost like a um, a, was beta beta testing or that that initial trial, mixing this and put a little of this because year number two, all the way up. Right. Because nothing, nothing but the sky. Well, definitely. I think that it's important that people recognize that, again, this is something that was created to help and for you to be vulnerable, to be transparent. I mean, if you follow Data Firm to Real, and I just put it in the comments for those, you, they're on Facebook and Instagram, and like they said, and YouTube, go in, follow Data Firm to Real. Uh, join them. If you're going to be in there, though, you know, do the work. Be a part of it. You know, be honest. Just be honest. You know, mm -hmm. hey, if you ain't honest, can't nobody help you if you lying to yourself. You know, yeah. right. that's the whole thing about no this judgment. Whole thing with relationships. There's no judgment. You know, this is just a, a place where you can come and it's like it says, it's date affirm, and then the last two words is the real. You know, the real is is about you know, putting it out there so you can that's that's in putting it out there, you're putting the work in. And yeah. and and you know, Marcus and Kia, you know, are willing to like I said, they're not counselors or doctors or anything, but they're a couple people 
that have been successful at it and who do you learn from? You know, you don't go you don't go ask a loser how you win a race. You know, you go exactly. ask the winner. You know, you know, you go ask the winner. You know, nobody wants to talk to the loser. You know, fix your car and do better next time. But the, the everybody wants to, everybody wants to talk to the winner of the race, you know, and, and so just keeping that in perspective. You want to talk to the winner of the race. These are two winners of the race. And I can say it I'm, I, because I knew them when they weren't together and I know them now. I, re, I was there at the beginning and I've watched. I've, I just had this conversation with Kia the other day how happy I am to see that this thing evolved the way I said it would, even though she said it was going to go. <laughs> I said, he, he did you know, say he got to get I, his credit. I, look here, I'm going to take all my credit right now. <laughs> I said, Marcus, I said this. I said, you know, you know, uh, Marcus going to tie you up real quick. And she was like, ah, no, nah, you know, I'm just, you know, coming out of some things. I'm moving different. Home, look at home skillet. I'm just me and me. I said, I get it. I said, I get it. I understand. Now look I at it, tied up. Now you tied up. You, now you now you got shackles on your feet, and you're happy about it. <laughs> and you're happy about it. And, and guess what? I'm happy about it because I I wanted you to be happy. I told you that many times, and you met that person that was willing to adjust, accommodate, but still be strong enough to tell you what you needed to hear when you didn't want to hear it. And I saw those things in Marcus at the beginning, and. Uh, Marcus is a very special man that we could all, as me, and learn a lot from Marcus about, you know, how to navigate through difficult situations without pride and ego, but love and understanding. And, you know, he does that very well. And you can tell it comes from experience. And so I say that to say this, you know, as you guys are watching this, As you guys are watching this, you know, that is the purpose of Data Firm to Real, to help create a roadmap for couples, you know, new couples or singles or existing couples, you know, that have been in this thing for a while. And sometimes as existing couples, we lose our way. And sometimes you need somebody to put you back on the road and give you, you know, a roadmap to the destination, which is success. And they do that very well. So if you guys are watching this, Hit the, the drop down, follow everybody on this. Make sure you follow Data Firm The Real. Also, at Kia McLean The Poet and at Marcus Goodwin 76. Yep. Marcus you ain't going to see shit on there. You ain't going to see shit on there. Because he has not been digitized. He has not been digitized. He, is, he will not be digitized. Not be digitized. <laughs> I, I do want to say this. I do want to say this. Um, before our, com- our part of the conversation ends. Um, Yule said this in the beginning. I want to say this in the closing. Yule is one of my very, very best friends. Um, and one of the things that I often try to tell people and remind people is you have to keep other positive people around you. You have to keep people who support you around you. Um, when Yul and I met and became friends, very quickly after that, I was I was actually engaged, and my fiance passed away. And mm. so, six months later, I end up meeting Marcus. And so I went through a lot of different things, you know. Of course, bad relationships, but then losing somebody um, to death who I was engaged to marry, and and so having those people that were around me who were supportive. I had some people on here. Um, I know Janelle was on here. Dana was on here. I had two friends that were there um, during that time for me. And so meeting Marcus and him feeling, just feeling my heart, you know, it's all those broken pieces, even though, I mean, I still had to deal with what I had to deal with. um, He understood that. And he was there for me. And he was understanding through all of that. And so you have to gravitate towards people who fill your cup. You have to do that. Go to people who are filling your cup. Do not attach yourself to people who are negative, who are naysayers, who are telling you you shouldn't do something. Because if I wouldn't have followed my heart, if I wasn't open, if I wasn't in a healing space, if I didn't already do the work, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in this relationship. The work, huh? 
that's that's, that's true. That's yeah, yeah. That's the work. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. And Damon, Damon mentioned earlier, you can't. Uh, what do you say? I don't want to misquote. Uh, I can't screen. see. I can't see the. I can't see the comments. Addressing the pain and 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 addressing the pain can be talking to the person who hurt you. Oh wait, that's that's not the one. There it is. It's hard to heal from pain if you don't address it. You know, so you gotta you gotta you gotta address it because that that's the only way you can heal. Imagine going to the doctor and saying, "Hey, doc, I don't feel good." Well, uh, what's the problem? Yeah, I'm not finna. I'm not finna tell you where I hurt or none of that. I'm just gonna fix it, Doc. Well, it's you don't up tell to you me to where, tell me where I hurt. Where I'm, where you hurt? I can't fix it. Well, well yeah, exactly. You know, now now I'm mad at the doctor because he didn't do his job. You know, you gotta, you gotta do the, and, and like you said, you gotta do the work. You have to put in the work. It starts with yeah. self. You gotta, you gotta have an honest look at yourself and say, hey, what, what's not right? Where 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 am I? Going left at. What am I not doing? Where where mistakes was 